I'm Sam Bagnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Human beings made into monsters by inhumane treatment abound in literature. In a book titled The Man Who Laughs, published in 1869, the French author Victor Hugo describes the Comprachicos thus. The Comprachicos, or child buyers, were strange and hideous nomads in the 17th century. They made children into sideshow freaks. To succeed in producing a freak, one must get hold of the child early. A dwarf must be started when he is small. They stunted growth, they mangled features. It was an art, science, of inverted orthopedics. Where nature had put a straight glance, this art put a squint. When nature had put harmony, they put deformity and imperfection. The child was not aware of the mutilation he had suffered. This horrible surgery left traces on his face, not in his mind. During the operation, the little patient was unconscious by means of a stupefying magic powder. In China, since time immemorial, they have achieved refinement in a special art and industry, the molding of living men. One takes a child two or three years old, puts them in, into a grotesquely shaped porcelain vase or bottle. It is without cover or bottom, so the head and feet protrude. In the daytime the vase is upright, at night it is laid down so the child can sleep. Thus the child slowly feels the contours of the vase with compressed flesh and twisted bones. This bottle development continues for several years. At a certain point it becomes an irreparable monster. Then the vase is broken and one has a man in the shape of a pot or a vase or a bottle. The Kyrgyz writer, Chinggis Eitmatov, recounts in The Day Lasts More Than 100 Years, published in 1980, the legend of the Anabeit Cemetery and the, and the zombies known as Mankuts. According to tradition, the nomad Juan Juan shaved the heads of the younger and more fit prisoners of war and wrapped their skulls in raw camel hide. The prisoners were then left to shrivel in the desert's scorching sun, without food or water, as the caps made of camel hide shrank around their heads, they perished in terrible agony. The survivors completely lost their memory. Their subsequent submissiveness and loyalty made them ten times more valuable than a regular slave, and three times as precious as a free man in terms of pecuniary damages when accidentally killed.